One of the most powerful aspects of the new Steinberg Mix console is the true integration of the control room. In previous versions of Cubase, this is always a separate mixer and very underutilized by most users. The control room is going to be ideal for dealing with metering, speaker switching, as well as setting up cue or headphone mixes for musicians recording. If you don't see the control room mixer here, go to your setup window in the upper left hand corner and make sure that the control room is checked like that. Now the control room is going to use the available inputs and outputs of your audio interface. So we can do this and set it up with our VST connection. So we can come right here and from our functions toolbar, we can open up our VST connections or hit F4 or access it from the devices menu. And you want to go to the studio tab. Now we can define the inputs and outputs of our audio interface for connection with various devices. So if I want to have a talkback microphone to communicate directly with the artist in their headphones, if I wanted to have external inputs, I could have up to six external inputs. So let's say I wanted to connect a DAT machine. I could have up to four Q mixes. In previous versions, these were labeled as studio mixes, but now uh, they've been changed in terminology to Q mixes, which is a little less confusing. So if I wanted to add a Q mix for our drummer, I'll come right there. And we could have up to four monitors. So let's say I wanted to add KRK speakers. Now these, my input and talk back, my talk back and my external inputs would be connected to the inputs of my audio interface and I need to tell it which input it's physically connected to. My outputs can be routed for my Q mixes as well as my monitors directly from the outputs of my audio interface. Some interfaces like the MR816 series, you could route directly to the headphones on the unit itself or route it to headphones and then feed it into a headphone amplifier. So once you have the connections made, one thing to be aware of is that to make sure that you don't have the outputs defined as well. So you want a connection here, but you want it to be not connected. Otherwise the signal can get double bust. There is a preference to prevent this. So uh, if you're wondering why you can't set the connection there, if you go to your preferences and then select control room, there's a selection here for exclusive device ports for monitor channels. So that will kind of prevent some confusion there. So something to be aware of. Now, one of the things that's really been enhanced with the control room in the mix console is the addition of great metering options. So we'll go ahead and kind of play back our project. We'll jump back here. Now, one of the most important concepts of the control room is the control room volume is going to be strictly for monitoring and does not affect the gain structure. The master fader affects the gain structure of your mix. So we see many people will kind of running into powered monitors will adjust their monitoring volume with their gain structure. And often they may have it way down here. And then as they do an export audio mix down, wonder why their mix sounds so very weak. And it's because the master fader has been dropped like 15 or 20 dB. So that will have a direct result on your gain structure. Here, the key thing is to have your signal level. This is your master monitoring volume. It's a little subtle, so just kind of look out for it here. So as you play, we can come right over here and I could just adjust the monitoring volume without affecting my gain structure whatsoever. Now, one of the things that's been added in the new version of the control room is very comprehensive metering. So this is often, uh, you know, well more than the price of Cubase entirely. So you can have different calibration scales. So if you want, if you're Monitors are set for eight minus 18, minus 20, or minus 24 dB. You also have different types of metering scale. So as we play, if I wanted to have digital scale, 
as well DIN, EBU, British Scale, or CAT System 20, CAT System 14, or CAT System 12 metering. So very, very powerful metering options there. If we click on the lower right-hand corner, this loudness control, and this will give us an idea of what our signal levels are doing in the project. So we can see what our peak level is, what our average volume, what the short-term volume. So very, very powerful metering directly in with the control room. Now the control room will have some great functionality for speaker switching and speaker handling. So I'm gonna come over here and let's take a look at our speakers. So if I want to expand different aspects of the control room, kind of click on the header tab and that will give you more choices. So if I'm in my control room section here and I'm playing my song, we can now just play our song and let's say I wanted to dim the levels just to have it softer. And then I could actually set my listen dim level right there. So if I want to listen to it kind of at full monitoring volume or drop it down by minus 20 dB. So very, very easy to do that. Now, one other thing that's very powerful is a listen bus. And we'll see this LE and this will enable the listen bus. Now, if I wanted to listen to a track, but not necessarily solo it, but still hear it within context, what I could do is I'll take my bass track and as we play this, we could click on the L. And what that'll do is that will actually dim the other tracks so I could hear the bass more pronounced, but with in context without soloing it. So the listen level will dim all the other channels. So I could hear that track better within context. If I wanted to listen to different speakers, say I wanted to switch between my Yamaha to my JBL, to my Adams, to my KRKs, I could just select right here. If I have different surround configurations like 5.1 to stereo to mono, I also have a full mix convert plugin so that I could down mix from stereo to mono or 5.1 to four channel surround or 5.1 to stereo or mono. We'll have some other choices just by clicking on the setup tab here. So now when I go to my speakers, I can have up to eight different plugins here. So if I wanted to EQ this speaker, or if I wanted to, if it's a powered speaker, run it through a limiter plugin, we could do that. Now we could also set different speaker levels because monitoring levels for each speaker. So if my Yamahas need to be a little louder than the JBLs, but the Atoms need to be a little softer here. This way, when I switch between my different speaker sets, they can have their individual volume so that I can have consistent monitoring volume between my speakers. Going to our cue mix at the top here, we can see we're gonna have our different cue mixes. And as we look at our cue mix, we can say, okay, we're gonna have our vocals as cue mix one, our guitars, bass, and our drummer. Now within my racks, I could enable cues directly there. Now, one of the th problems with previous versions, it was real pain to kind of get all of the cue mixes set up for what's often called a more me headphone mix. So if I wanted to do that, we could use this in conjunction with our quick link mode. So I'm gonna activate this from the toolbar and I'm gonna select all of the channels in our project. So all 68 channels. Then within my control room, I'm gonna right click. And we now can select all of the cues. This is a great, great time saver. And then I'm gonna say, let's activate the cue sends for all the channels. So this will be my vocal cue mix, my guitars, bass, drums. So if I wanted to send more bass to the vocalist, I could just adjust that level. Let me bypass my quick link. You could just send more of this channel to the different cue mixes. 
Now that's very tedious if you want to do it one by one, especially on a large project. So I'm going to enable my quick link again. And then from all cues, we'll just right click there. I will now say, let's use the current mix levels. And then it's going to set the values there. Then I'm going to right click again. And what that's going to allow us to do is what I want to do is now come right over here and use the current pan settings. So we'll do that. So now if I wanted to do a more meme mix for the drummer, I'm going to select all the drum parts here, hold down the shift key and still have the quick link engaged or hold down shift plus alt or option. So now my drum mix is in Q mix four. So I'm going to take all these channels and then add more drums to the drummer's headphone mix. I'm going to select the guitar parts. So we'll come right here, select all the guitars. And I want to send that more into headphone mix two. So now if I wanted to, within my actual control room, listen to the independent cue mixes, I can also come right here and I'm listening currently in a control room to my mix, which is the mix from the faders here. So as you play, if I wanted to hear the drummer's Q mix, I click on Q4 and go to Q2. Now let's say if I wanted to compare the mix that I'm getting to an external source off of an iPod that the client brought in. I could set my external input at the top here to iPod and switch between the external mix and my mix. So this is an easy way to compare different recordings to what you're doing. So, or if you wanted to listen to a half inch tape machine or off of a DAT or directly from DVD. So you could set your source right there. If we've done this great take and we know that the drummer doesn't want to move from his uh, drum set uh, for fear of kind of messing everything up and we're gonna take the track and have the guitar player, bass player play to the drum tracks, but we want to keep the drummer kind of occupied. What we could do is actually, instead of having the drummer listen to his cue mix, I can now click on external input and play the iPod source, and that's what the drummer would hear in his headphones. So very, very powerful for allowing you to set up different headphone mixes. The click track is very critical as well. So the drummer, bass player, and guitarist may want to hear the click track, but the singer may find a click track distracting. So we'll take off the click track for the singer. Now, often drums can be very loud and you need a louder headphone mix going out to the drums to get over the acoustics uh, of his loud drums. And let's say the bass player wants to hear the click track uh, a little softer and a guitar player wants to hear the click track very soft, but only in his right headphone mix or his left headphone mix. So you can very easily set up your click track so that the musicians get their best performance. Now we also have the talk back. So if I enable the talk back here, and this is a microphone that I have connected into my audio interface, I could communicate to the different musicians by clicking on the TE icon directly there. So I could say, oh, that was a great take. Um, let's just try one more. And then if I didn't want the bass player to hear, I could say, oh, you know, everyone else I'm communicating to except for the bass player. It's like the bass player screwed up going into the second chorus. Yeah, let's try just one more time and now everyone can hear. So you can pick and choose who you're communicating with on your talkback mic. Also within the control room, if we go to our setup, we can click here on our different cue mixes. If our singer wants to hear reverb in their headphone mix, we can now come over here and just as a plugin, they want to hear the reverence reverb. We can now just double click and within the cue mix, we can have up to eight insert effects for each individual cue mix as well. So if we wanted the guitar player to hear more reverb or delay, or we want to have a compressor on the headphone mix of the bass player. 
So very, very comprehensive. But the most important thing is all these settings, and once you set up the powerful QMix, once these settings are saved up, they're stored directly in your project. So if you have the magic QMix, you can open it up a week later or a year later and have the same exact QMix and have the same environment. So you can see how incredibly powerful the software control room is for handling your metering, speaker switching and management, as well as QMix and headphone mix for the artist.